watching on MTV Music Television, and I hope you're doing it in stereo. I'm now Back, back into the stompy grounds. Back into the walking plains. I put one foot in front of the other. Do not let those, those jerks take my packages. I did just bail out of the game last time. I was in a pretty bad spot. I was getting harassed. Getting harassed by mules. That wanted my, one of my Amazon packages. Oh, those are mine. Oh, they're not mine, but they're for somebody else. I think, uh, I think what'll help, I was getting a little loose last time, okay, jeez, I think if I, uh, jeez, I think, see, yeah, they're all tied down, look at this, so I think if I condense all of this into one, one little wagon, it'll probably make it a little easier, I don't know how much that can hold, but I think it, I think it's fine. Also, uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot of junk on my back. Carrier, and then I need to, okay. I need to take some stuff off the carrier and put it onto my back, like ladders and stuff. There we go. This fucking game, man, is so awesome. <laughs> I do have a bullet. Okay. Back. All right. That looks that looks way more compact. Why did all the roads disappear in this game? Um there was a keep on keeping on it's delivered your cargo. Nice. So there was an extinction event that basically uh destroyed human society basically made everyone give up on the idea of living under governments and, and working communally because they just figured it was the end of the human race. And then on top of that, there's something called time fall now that when it rains, it basically accelerates the passage of time of whatever it hits. So time fall hits the roads and just makes them uh, path you laid down was used by somebody else. Hey, BB's happy. Uh, so yeah. This game is actually pretty pretty unique in that a lot of its game mechanics are are uh, plotted into the world and are important. Uh, just have to go through mule territory. Mmm. Mmm. There's a bike. I can't use the bike because I have I'm dragging a wagon. So this goes to. Distribution center, distribution. Okay. Okay, that all goes to that goes to the distribution. Yep. Okay. So I yeah I need to go here. And not be accosted by any mules in the process. They're gonna scan my ass. Oh yeah, chiral bridges are a new thing. In director's cut. What about walking beside the river? There aren't mules there. The river. The river. This thing? This right here? Or you mean that? I have to... Uh, You mean like cutting south and then back up north? Yeah, I guess that could work. There's BTs though. Yeah. That, that goes through time fall. Which, I guess if I scout... If I skirt around the, the south edge of Mule territory, just walk around this border here, that might be okay. I think I'm gonna, yeah. I think that's a that's a top top strat. I think I'm gonna do that. 
And if I'm going on foot too, I think crossing that terrain is going to be time consuming, but not. I can go up this this like ravine here, and I have ladders and stuff, so I can climb my way out if I need to. All right, let's go. Keep on keeping on. Weapons restrictions lifted. <laughs> Played for about three hours today, just now realizing exactly how much shit you can end up carrying. Yeah, uh, you get you get level ups. Like Sam gets better at carrying cargo, but also I have I have cyber legs that help me carry more cargo too. So you can get some pretty you can get a pretty ridiculous kit. Uh, you can get a big wobbly tower of stuff on your back, Whoa. which is fun. Always fun. The thing that always gets me too is like picking up these packages along the way. You do have quite a bit of stuff on you though. Doesn't mix well with BTs, yeah. It's it's I love I love how this game is sort of self balancing. If you if you want to carry a ton of shit and try to do multiple deliveries, that's fine. But you are legitimately inviting more difficulty on yourself just because it's harder to move. It's harder to move. It makes you a, a bigger target for mules. Makes you a softer target for BTs. I I am I am such a fan of the the core design of this game and how all of its mechanics play together. Kind of like I was I was talking about with Borderlands, how there's really nothing in that game that lets you elect it, like elect for a greater risk but greater reward. Uh, this game has risk and reward at its core, based on how how many deliveries you want to try to do. Hey, Phantom Nix. Knocking stuff over when you go into the depot station is ridiculous. Oh yeah, like if if the stuff stacks too high, it can bonk off if you like walk under a low bridge or something. <laughs> yeah. Is this still sponsored? Uh Morgie, good question. Technically no, but since since they sponsored me yesterday, I might as well. So whatever. The, the message is still in chat. If people want to check out the game, they can, but I won't be as heavy about the messaging. I just feel I feel a teensy bit. I don't know if guilty is the right word, but given that I didn't actually show off any of the content from the director's cut. You know, there's a time fall. I'm wondering if I cross over into this area if, if a mule ping is going to get me right away. Hmm. Oh no, wait, that's just the boundary of the network. Okay. The director's cut upgrade from the base game is only nine dollars. Oh, shared lockers. Yeah, um, it's only it's only nine bucks. There's a save transfer. Uh, there's a slight graphical upgrade, like the draw distance is pushed out a little bit. I really want to check out the like the the. Uh, oh fuck me, really? I really want to check out those the like stealth missions and stuff they added, which as soon as ah, oh, are you kidding me? Okay, fine. Damn it. See, this is like this is this is an example of really interesting decision making in this game. I'm I'm stuck between BTs and mules. And I have to get my cargo through. I think as long as I stay on this line, all the BTs should stay to the left of me. Yeah, I'm not even really close enough to see him. <laughs> yeah, Tavy Wavy? You're like looking at some walking, huh? We got some walking going on here. Uh, yeah, I really want to check out the the extra content because if if I don't miss my guess, there's I feel like extra content is where Kojima can be extra goofy. Oh wow! Yeah, okay, I was just right on the line. I love that the Audra deck gives you a thumbs up. Yeah, Phantom, it is it is very literally a walking simulator. There we go. But it is it is one of the first games that makes walking a game mechanic. Fully and completely, and I love it for that. Because you know what? Walking is fun. I like walking. Now if if I ever have like a spare thirty minutes in the day, I'll just start walking around my neighborhood. Feels good, man. No other ladder around here. Just me. Yeah, just me. All right. 
You know, I think I only have like one more ladder, so I gotta be a little careful about this. Where's that optional package though? I'm gonna pick that up. Wait a minute. What? Where'd it go? That film director. There was a package that was was going to distribution center. It looked like it was directly on the way. Oh, there it is. It's right there. Can you pick the ladder back up? Um, no. I don't. Wait, can you? Is the Audra deck giving you, or is it BB? Yeah, it's probably BB. I don't think you can pick ladders back up once they're down. I think they're just there. Dismantle? What does that do? Oh, just... Okay, so you can destroy it, but that's it. Time Paul would have gotten it pretty quickly anyway. It was already really rusted through. Two wheels up. that's just destroyed huh I guess timefall can destroy equipment hmm because I thought timefall would only destroy containers but not damage the things themselves but I have had yeah, I've had multiple multiple pieces of gear now I think it's because it's on my back like there's a place you can carry equipment destroyed yeah and a litter. Whatever, time fall gets rid of it. Man. If the container breaks, then it won't be containing things. Yeah, but that's not how deliveries work. Like, a container will break, and then the uh, the actual item you have to deliver is it doesn't get damaged until you actually fall. Oh, the bullet gun doesn't have a special casing like the cargo. Okay. So the time fall hits it directly. Yeah, I've had I've had blood bags and grenades get destroyed by timefall as well. Which I think is better from a design standpoint. I like the idea that timefall timefall removes your tools. Jeez, that looks so cool. Hey! hey! Okay, now I need to cut north. Good. I didn't want to have to use my other ladder yet. Been replaying Phantom Pain for the fifth time. Is there combat in this game? Sort of. There can be, but the goal is not combat. The goal is usually to avoid combat. Combat's what you do when you're cornered, and it, it becomes, the, like, the last resort, basically. You usually want to incapacitate whatever's whatever's harassing you to get away. Because the goal is to deliver packages, not to kill. You can fight BTs, which can be pretty fun. There are some boss fights you have to do. And amusingly, those are those can be similar to some of the big scale stuff you saw in Metal Gear Solid 5. Like you end up fighting giant oil whales and stuff. Yeah, this is this is a hippie game at its core. It is about co connectivity and construction. There's no answer at all. No reactions or bullshit replies. I mean it's got music like this. You know? <laughs> words you'd say. In Metal Gear Solid 5, you're playing as a warlord. Well, they got uh, lost. In this game, you're playing as a humble delivery man. So I think the the gameplay and the theme sort of shift to match. Forget. There are some combat sequences when you play as Mads Mikkelsen's character, which are kind of weird, to be honest. You go through these, like, nightmare environments that are war-torn, and there's a lot of shooting and stuff. But those are pretty short and pretty weird. a cairn, right? I think I think that you see those whenever another another 
uh, Porter is resting. There's the uh, chiral bridge. It's hard when you come to realize someone's path is headed elsewhere in life. So, babe, you walk your way out of mine. I start to think of you from time to time. But yeah, just comparing that trip with the one from last night, that's the difference between uh, scouting and thinking and just running straight to your objective. Delivery bot's doing a little dance. Hey, guy. Can you use the music player outside of your personal room? I don't think you can. I'll I'll check, but I don't think you can actually. Look at all this stuff I get to. Uh, can you explain this game to me a little bit? I can try. Um, this is, uh, ooh. This is a, uh, a very weird game. Very original. It's in a setting that is unlike most other games. Uh, and its mechanics are also unlike most other games. Let me think, let me think of how to boil this down. All right. The, the game Death Stranding takes place after an extinction event. And, and there's a whole lore to what happened and why and how. And a lot of the, the human race is still kind of left trying to figure out what's going on. I th the core of it, though, is that the barrier between like the, dim the dimension of death or the realm of death and the realm of life and the realities we know it is starting to break down. Dead things are coming over uh, and causing extinction level events, basically. Um, meanwhile, though, humanity... In, the, in this world, also humanity had sort of progressed to the point where the internet and technology had changed human society. Um, I'm trying to think how to... So, so basically, all work is mostly automated. Uh, AI and machines run pretty much everything. Uh, the only thing that AI and machines can't solve is logistics, the actual physicality of having to move things around, of resources needing to be in a particular place at a particular time to get work done so in the in the world of death stranding the only actual work that remains is transportation um and in this reality like you would think humans can just trans or uh sorry robots can just transport everything and they do but in the world of death stranding there are hazards that make ai and automation not ideal for actually moving physical substances across ground uh so in the world of Death Stranding, you play as Sam Porter Bridges, is his name, you're a delivery man, and your job, the quest of the game, is to travel west across the United States and reconnect disconnected outposts of humans back into a connected network and a connected society. Basically trying to reform the US government reform the united states as a as an entity 
and uh, and basically reconnect human civilization because everyone is just sort of scattered. Everyone's kind of given up and everyone is just waiting for for like humanity to fizzle out because that's where everybody thinks we are basically. What confuses me in this game is the babies, but I guess that is spoilers uh, to explain that. Sort of, sort of. The babies are kind of an interesting uh, game mechanic and their lore is, is laid out pretty explicitly in the game. So the bridge baby, the BB in the tank is actually a child of a stillborn mother or is a stillborn child of a dead mother. So there's a still mother somewhere else that's being kept alive, but is basically brain dead. And her womb is being simulated in the tank. So the baby thinks it's still inside of a living mom. The reason that that's important is because since the baby is connected to a dead mother, the fetus has the ability to sense the realm of the dead. It's, it lives in both kind of at the same time. So by connecting that fetus to a, a, like a detection instrument, which is that little arm that pops out, that's how couriers are able to detect where BTs are or beached things. Those are the entities that cross over from the realm of the dead uh, to the realm of the living. They're usually invisible and they're not like we can't see them because they don't exist in our reality, basically. But by using that little like like pokey thing, basically couriers can navigate around BTs to deliver packages. Um, because getting caught by a BT is really bad. It basically causes an antimatter... Uh, reaction, a nuclear explosion called a void out. Uh, actually, I got to see one of those last time I played. Um, and those are those are bad. Those are real bad. The void outs are part of the reason why uh, people just gave up. Uh, because that destroyed infrastructure. It killed millions of people. Uh, and it was just really bad all around. And that's that's also why delivering packages is really, really hard. So, and that's also why most of humanity now lives in these very low population, ultra, ultra separated. Oh, look at that. Dee -dee -dee. <laughs> I like that he's walking on it. What you're describing is tripping me the fuck out. Oh, it gets so much deeper than that too. This is just like, this is just level one of Death Stranding lore. There's so much more in there. Speaking of, last time I, uh, ooh, new colors, rose pink. Um, last time I got, uh, I got some lore about how no one... No one fucks in, in Death Stranding future because we saw a very strange cutscene where we reunited lost lovers and it was weird. They're weird. Uh, and there's a reason for that. This game actually has a super well thought out world that it takes place in. And a lot of the, a lot of the NPCs and interactions you have are very weird, but they make sense given the context of the world and the people who live in it. Um, what gets, what gets wackier is, uh, where did that actually go through? 59%? Okay. Basically got there. All right. B's not bad for a robot delivery. Oh, our hormones get suppressed by the chiral stuff. Yeah. So that's the other part of it is like, uh, human beings have to take drugs, smart drugs, to be happy and giving people social media likes is now baked into society because it's necessary to moderate people's brain so, chemistry here's stuff you wrote. so the likes you get like you from other players are a game mechanic because it makes you it makes sam happier so whenever you like put down a ladder and somebody else uses it and gives it a like that comes through to you as like currency basically <laughs> Try to expedite evaluations. You only have a certain amount of stamina to work with between each facility. Yeah, stamina is one of the resources you have to work with. Hey, just got your max stamina from the people gets cut down the longer you're out. You, you can't get sick. Like I don't think that's a mechanic. The motor for one was impressive. I think this unlocks the races, which is great. Well timed. It can be fitted to a modified truck and be ready to go in no time. They contracted the junk dealer straight away and got it added to the list of supplies that can be fabricated. They had good things to say about the pouch, too. Contract has already been made, and you'll find the pouch in your private room. If you want to customize your backpack, you'll need to drop by one anyway. 
Anyway, I hope you appreciate what those two did for you, and give this new gear a try. The oxytocin thing made me sad. It's the end point of the idea that we may be over-medicating depression that might be a product of environment more than brain chemistry. Yeah. I mean, that, that explicitly is also addressed in the game. There was a, there was an email I got from somebody who was like, we did, ever since you came by and like connected us back to the network, people have been taking less drugs because we're more connected to the human condition and less, less innately depressed. And he was like, we might not have to take drugs anymore. <laughs> Does he have a baby inside of him? No, it's in that, it's in that little container right there. Hmm. Connected via a very umbilical cord looking wire. Which is another thing about this game. This game's very heavy, heavy on uh, connectivity imagery. Umbilicals, cords, wires, lines. Um, let me go outside real quick. I see dead people. Thank you for the sub. Because you can also see... Uh, let me see if it's, if it's visible. Yeah. The threads coming down. I'll take care of you, though. Are they're, they're game indicators of... I don't... I think those are where BTs are. Or dead people? That might be where couriers died. But... The idea of connectivity and threads. The idea of connecting across divides. Of, like, connect connections between the realm of the dead and the realm of the living. Connecting through the realm of the dead to the realm of the living. Like, it's, there's a lot going on there. There's a lot going on there. And it's it's all pretty well thought out. Planning to rebuild the road. The road? I mean, there's there's multiple roads. Welcome. You mean the one going south from here? Maybe there might be enough resources just in this in this point. But I'm gonna go take a I'm gonna go take a little siesta first. Black strands or BTs? Okay. What are the what are the white ones? Because there's green ones too. Oh, BK. Oh. Boy, I think I think it saved when I turned in my delivery. I hope so. That's the second time it crashed. Hmm. What are BTs? BT stands for beached thing, and it's a it's an entity that has washed ashore in this reality. Uh, it is a a dead it is a dead soul that did not stay or transfer completely into the realm of the dead. Um, in this game, the realm of the dead is or the the strand is what they call it. The separation between the two the two realms is sort of separated by a, or is, it's represented by water. Um, and even the name Death Stranding is a term that existed before this game. A Death Stranding is when a whale beaches itself and dies, and no one knows why. Whales just do that sometimes. So uh, similarly, I mean, there's this imagery of of whales and and uh, and sea life here. Uh, a, a BT, a beached thing, is something that has washed out of its natural environment. Um, similarly, I think you could say the game is saying that we as humans are not meant to be connected and immersed. Uh, we're not meant to be connected through dead things. The internet, basically. That, that con connecting via wire and cable and electricity is sapping the life out of the human condition. Um, you could, that's, that's my interpretation, but Beginning that's a pretty surface level, bridges, surface ID. level interpretation. ID. <clears throat> yeah, beach things are, uh, are ghosts. Yeah, basically. Ghosts that have washed ashore. Sam Porter Bridges. All right, let's see if I can go down in my room this time. Says the Twitch streamer over the internet. Yeah, I mean, you're right. You're right. This this form of uh, socialization, that is what it is, is different. I think some might argue less sustainable, less nourishing than than living in person with people. Who that? Who's that? Who's in my shower? But my parasocial relationship? I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's interesting to think about. What did Sam get the cyberpunk features? I, there are there are like cyberpunk cosmetics you can get. 
Uh, there was like a side quest to unlock them. How do you progress in this game? What gives you the ability to upgrade your stats and progress further? Uh, you, you get delivery missions that basically form a story. Um, and you're like, you, you level up by, oh shit. Ah, oh, shit. Fuck. That got me a little bit. That got me. Sam, don't know if you're aware, but you can customize your pack and your private room. Why not give it a try? Okay. I'll customize my pack. Oh yeah, you can get like batteries and stuff. Put my my blood type on there. Oh yeah, so upgrading, sorry. Um, whenever you do a delivery, you get ranked on aspects of that delivery, like the speed you did it, the path you took, the, the amount of time, the amount of damage that the, uh, that the delivery took along the way. And those, those all go into like a, a ranking that then upgrades various aspects of your character. Go for grenade patches, great for holding emergency blood bombs. I always like the, uh, I was like running though. But I will... I don't know if it'll... F oh, it will fit. Okay. Yeah. Is so tactical. Need to play this game. I'm afraid this one is so time consuming. Uh, being so invested, like I was with every Metal Gear Solid game, not sure if I'd finish this one. It seems tedious. Uh, I suppose it could be. It just depends on depends on your approach, I suppose. I don't think it's tedious because I think playing the game is actually pretty relaxing. I actually like the the aspect of taking a delivery, scouting scouting out where to go and what to do, making the tools, and then setting out on a journey, and and seeing what happens. Usually, usually it doesn't go as planned, but that's the fun part of it. Just sort of interpreting or uh, adapting on the fly to what to what changes. I find myself getting sucked into being Sam before the tedium finds its way into my attention span. Yeah, I agree. I think the closest it comes to being tedious is when you are just getting har harried and harassed by uh, by BTs or mules. Because mules, man, if they get you and if they get you and they just keep yanking your packages away, oh, nice, poopy time. Oh, Bolo level two can tie a BT up. I didn't know that. I don't know. Anyway, there's your ride plug. No poo bombs, come on. Sam's not dropping bombs today. Jeez. Oh yeah, I wanted to uh I wanted to read the lore about our asexual future. Oh 
Oh, mules got it. Okay. Uh, I don't want to clear the red tag off of all the other emails though, because I want to read those later. The emails have a ton of, ton of really interesting lore in them. Oh, it was an interview. That's right. Man. So here's here's a bit about timefall, and chiral clouds. Why do chiral clouds form? Why does time fall occur, and why does it herald the manifestation of BTs? These are questions we still struggle to answer. As we know, BTs are beings formed of something akin to antimatter. Their first appearance coincided with the Death Stranding. Prior to that point, it is believed there were very little in the way of antimatter present in our world at all. But since we've learned that this was far from the case for even before the Stranding, antimatter was all around us. I discovered a scientific paper on the subject titled On Antimatter and Clouds. According to the paper, gamma radiation generated by lightning strikes can trigger the form nah, trigger the formation of positrons. And indeed, particles of antimatter can be detected inside regular rain clouds. The mechanism by which they are formed is not fully understood, but the mere existence of this phenomenon is enough to suggest something intriguing. Chiral clouds contain chiralium, yes? Well, uh, hold on a minute. Well... What would happen if gamma radiation were to act upon them in a way, or in the same way it does in regular clouds? Could chiralium excited by gamma radiation exacerbate minute distortions in space-time, somehow loosening the seams that connect us to our beaches? Okay, so beaches... <laughs> um, every person, every living person with a soul has a beach, and that's where they go when they die. And the beach is where they cross over into being dead the realm of the dead that's where their soul crosses over into the great beyond basically and and also in terms of imagery and meaning a beach is a meeting of two different worlds right it's the meaning of the ocean and the land so it's it's a and also water and ocean is often represented in this game as being the realm of the dead it's also a place humans can't exist or can't live Everyone, yeah, there is no human collective beach, it seems. Everyone has their own. Um, although, later in the game, that also bends around a little bit. Anyway. Buh, 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 buh. And if so, when the excited Chiralium mixes with time fall and descends to the ground below, could the entire region beneath the clouds become much more strongly connected with the beach as a result? This could well explain why BTs appear in areas prone to time fall. Furthermore, if the antimatter we previously thought did not exist, or did not even exist in any measurable quantity on Earth were in fact present in such commonplace phenomena as the very clouds above us, would this not lend credence to the theory that BTs, beaches, and the world of the dead, all of these things may have existed long before the Stranding? Too much of a theoretical leap? Perhaps. I do not deny our world changed drastically and irrevocably. Nevertheless, could it not be that the Death Stranding was merely the clap of thunder that brought this great change to our attention and not the change itself? Exuvea, you have a baby now? Oh, nine months. Congrats! Stream baby. Gotcha. And yeah, Lempos, you're correct. Heartman goes to his beach all the time. He has a... He's called Heartman because he has a... He dies like every 18 minutes or something. And his, his like... He has a, a... What is it? A shocker guy. Defibrillator. Permanently installed that shocks him awake. All right, an asexual world. This is the real shit here. Three years ago, all right. Records suggest that the widespread aversion towards physical contact and intimacy was a phenomenon that had been observed even before the Death Stranding. One contemporary report, for example, detailed the, or details the increasing popularity of the sexless lifestyle among young people. A growing percentage of the younger cohort were self-identifying as asexual, claiming to be incapable of feeling desire or attraction. Accordingly, such individuals were less likely to have children or engage in sexual activity. It should be noted, however, that many other unique sexual identities were being recognized during this period, such as demisexuals, who are incapable of sexual attraction without an emotional connection, and pa panromantics, who profess an attraction unrestricted by sex or gender, albeit one not necessarily sexual in nature. One theory posits that the stranding accelerated the proliferation of these sexualities, in a terrifying new world in which BTs roam and annihilation is an everyday occurrence, people have grown reticent to form emotional connections with others. Although there has been no measurable decrease in human fertility, the birth rate has nevertheless dropped dramatically. 
Incidents of sexual harassment and assault have also seen a sharp decrease, which seems to suggest that sex could not be further from our minds, uh, for better or worse. I must preempt myself in admitting that I do not have any empirical data with which to support the following claim. That said, it is my contention that based on the aforementioned observations and others, the vast majority of the population could be categorized as asexual. Ephibs don't work that way. Yeah, I uh, that was that was something weird that I I took a first aid class and they were like, yeah, defibrillators don't start start your heart. They merely they stop it so that your brain can restart it. Yeah, but it's a neat idea. Uh, flagged for archival review, article advances a controversial thesis widely regarded as uns unsubstantiated and discriminatory. Prevailing theory is that increased self-identification of aforementioned sexualities is due to increased societal awareness and acceptance. Historical records indicate individuals asserting identities falling outside cisgender heteronormativ heteronormativity face significant discrimination and persecution, leading to suppression and concealment as survival strategies. It is generally accepted that a variety of factors contributed to reduce sexual activity and birth rate pre- and post-stranding studies are ongoing. Anyway, I love that stuff. Love it. Got a Gundam. Thanks to the discovery of tea crystals, which seemed like they might provide the solution to Earth's energy crisis, a power source known as the EU system was developed. Project ReSphere arose as a response to wide-scale adoption of this power source, and the resulting overpopulation was largely enabled by the development of the frame architecture robot skeleton. The Genbu model is a large, heavily ar armored mechanoid created by designer... Yoji Shin Shinkawa. Wait, does that mean that there were mechs in Death Stranding verse? Or is that just a reference to something else? Yeah, well rounded disclaimer, right? Coffee cup. Leaving aside the bronze cups of the ancient world or the stainless steel beakers of the modern age, cups in general, ceramic cups at least, are fragile things. Coffee houses found po popularity in mid 17th century England giving birth to a thriving coffee culture. But by the mid-18th century, it was tea that was in its ascendancy. It was for this reason that when England's colonies chose to rebel in response to their master's oppressive policies, they threw crates of tea into the sea at Boston, thereby helping to spark the American Revolution. But let us return to the humble cups in which tea and coffee come. They are easily broken, and as such, constitute a difficult load for any porter. I love, oh my god, unidentified data. I'm all about just like this game being a... Uh, being Kojima's, Kojima's like journal, whatever notes, whatever weird shit he's, re he's reading about in a given day. Oh, Yoji Shinkawa, uh the Metal Gear Solid series, okay. So yeah, you can listen to music in the, um, in your private room, but I don't think, I don't think there's like a music player, unfortunately. Police Knots is full of shit like that. I have yet to play Police Knots. I want to clear these there. Clear those indicators. Ghost in the Shell manga has a lot of authors aside to go deep into stuff like that. I read a little bit of Ghost in the Shell. I was I was staying with a friend once that had a, a Ghost in the Shell omnibus and I just started reading it. And I was surprised at, yeah, how many asides they go into to sort of like talk about the minutiae of the of the universe. Um, and like little doodles and stuff to kind of explain how robotics work. It's really cool. Just cuts the music, that hurts. Also didn't drink any beer. Take a look. This is what the world looked like hundreds of millions of years ago. It was just one big continent. Ah, uh, Goose, I'm, I'm proud to be your background noise while you're working. Timbuktu Bear, thank you very much for the prime. 
I'll show you the real thing soon. There's one thing Death Stranding reinforced to me. It's that. You don't have to be... You don't have to do it all. No one person has to do it all. Everyone's just got to do a little bit. Though, if my little bit can be making other people's work days go by smoother, easier, and happier, I'm satisfied all with that. Well, I'm proud of that. Explore. You'll be able to go wherever you want. Even the moon. game suggesting that BBs can be born but they become couriers themselves? Mm, that's not that's not the impression I get. But I think I think specifically the BB that you work with and their origin and what happened there is open to some interpretation, I think. All right. Death Stranding content. Here we go. Director's Cut content. Can the BB alert enemies? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think BB crying will ever alert an enemy. But if BB gets too stressed out or tired, your your BT detection will shut down. So if you if you stress out BB enough, the BB will just basically go to sleep or sh or like shut down, and then you can't see BTs anymore. Yeah, so this is one of the things they added with Director's Cut. I'm going to show off some of this stuff. So VR missions, oh my gosh. Dun -dun. even like shatter into little cyber cubes. God, it's the best. Oh, that's close. Oh, I think they got me actually. Maybe? This all boils down to the game needing a lot of time dedicated to it? Hmm. Maybe. I wouldn't say it's any more time hungry than than any other uh, any other triple A game. I think if you if you really want to like savor every little bit of effort and lore crammed into this game, then yeah. It might it might require a little more attention from you. the blade the blade fist pump
so yeah, this... For the question that was asked a while ago, this is the screen that basically shows you, like, leveling up. And, uh, improving your... your base stats. Point deduction for destroying blue targets. Alright. Oh, you only have 15? Okay. Oh, wait, there's more. Uh oh. Running out of blood. No, I'm fine. Never mind. My blood bags are working. I missed a few. Yeah, I had to. Oh. This music goes shockingly hard. guys oh, my time's not gonna do too hot this time hmm. back at the beginning yeah maybe maybe like behind the starting area Ah. There we go. Yeah. Oh, it might be a cutscene, but in the trailers, you 100% see babies in his body. Yeah, that's true. When you're repatriating, when you're... Sam has the ability, when he dies, to go back into his body and come back to life. And yeah, for some reason, in that cutscene, when that happens, you swim down your own throat, 
from a first person perspective, you see BB down there giving you the thumbs up and then you fly back out in the real world. So that's a weird, that's a weird one. I like that, okay. Animal conservation, perfect stealth. Let me need all mules. Because he's a Dooms? I think Dooms has more to do with his ability to sense or react to BTs without the aid of a BB. Um, he, he has Dooms and also he has the ability to repatriate. I don't, I don't, I don't think those two were explicitly connected, but they might be. I don't have any gear. I don't think I can do anything without, ah, without an item. <laughs> That's right, I forgot the basics of CQC. Ow. Hold on, I wanna, I wanna do a, like a, do like a body slam? Hold on. Body slam! Oh, <laughs> I missed. Beat the shit out of them. That's true. One second. Ha! Come on! Ha. Knee strike! <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Stunned myself. Ow, 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 ow. I knocked myself out! <laughs> kind of worked. <laughs> oh, okay. This this mode specifically doesn't let you use hand to hand because it is supposed to be thrown weapons. Ow! What is the porter system? Uh, it's just a delivery network of humans that are given uh, specific equipment and rare equipment to be able to actually make deliveries. So BBs are BBs are pretty rare. Um, he just sees me right away. One stun grenade doesn't knock them out, huh? They eat BBs? Wait, what? Nobody eats BBs. Oh, the mules? Yeah, mules just steal packages. So mules, mules are kind of like a cult. Um, so in the distant future, since humankind has uh, eliminated the need to work, really, there are people who can't really function without work. They don't know what to do. So they basically invented a cult around delivering packages because that's the only work left to do. So in a, in a fervor, to do work and feel the fulfill the fulfillment of doing work, mules will attack couriers and steal their packages because they're the ones who want to deliver them instead. They want they want the oxytocin release, the good feeling release of doing a job. Oh, I do have a strand. For some reason, I didn't see that. Well, that changes everything. Yeah, they need that thumbs up exactly. Aren't mules former porters that went mad? I think I think they're they're that's part of it. They're former porters that went mad, but they're also like normal people that also went a little crazy in the post-apocalypse. Are there not enough packages for everyone to deliver? Um, there might be. 
there are certainly more packages than... Or there are packages that need delivering. They all suffer from Porter Syndrome. Yeah, that is kind of talked about, isn't it? Like, a, just addicted to making deliveries. But a lot of them were from the first Bridges expansion. Or the ex Expedition? Oh yeah, Expedition. Could be. Could be. People that just sort of got lost along the way. Okay. We can poke... Poke equipment off of you. Ow! Whatever, this, this is going poorly. Just gonna get out of here. You gotta kick them when they're down to KO them. You're not supposed to in that specific mode. That mode is all about uh, using ranged weapons to uh, to knock out mules. You, I can't, I can't kick them, but it was specifically like you shouldn't do that. This mission is about using grenades. So yeah, there you go. The game has the game has VR VR missions now, which is awesome. Oh, Lost Versus, that's a good point, yeah. Chiral stuff does drive some people insane, but Sam has natural immunity, and I think that might be part of part of Dooms. Um, Sam is not affected by chirality in the way a lot of people are. I'll take off the VR and put on my other... my Sam glasses. Maybe I'll do both. We'll do VR and same glasses. There we go. That's a cool looking guy right there. How old is this game? It came out in 2019, I think? Ooh, Captain Cradle Robber with a VIP or ban. Daring. Good luck. Let's see what happens. Captain Cradle Robber, no! That's a whammy. Captain, you got whammed. Oh. That sucks. That sucks. 250,000 channel points. Thrown into the furnace. Burned alive. Well, Captain Cradle Robber, thank you very much. Hey, look at that. 6.9 hours. Nice. Thank you very much for watching the stream enough to earn that many points. That's a lot. That's a lot of watching. It's a lot of faithful stream viewing. I very much appreciate it. I really do. I'm gonna reward that. I'm gonna reward that. Uh... How you doing, Sam? Okay. I'm gonna reward that loyalty with a ban. One hour ban. My most loyal viewers are the only ones that get to enjoy being banned from my chat. So, do enjoy that. Oh, fuck. I have to go back to the cosplayer. I will go back to the cosplayer because I want to. Is there anything else going back to the cosplayer? Because I can just take that while I'm on the way. That's all going to the engineer. Interesting. What does that icon mean? That little blue icon. Oh. Oh, it groups it by where it's going. Well, that's nice. That's really handy. <laughs> Live slug reaction. God, I love it. Uh. That's why it's done. Okay, nothing going to the cosplayer. Alright. Okay. Wait. Oh. This goes here, though. Why is it... That's weird. 
I can just take it out of storage and deliver it. Yeah, seems like it. Okay. Am I joining the director's cut content? I am, actually. I just played a, a little bit of the extra VR missions, and those were fun. Okay, let's see. You can now use your PCC to construct Cairo bridges. They require much less space to deploy than the standard type. The unit also includes an ID authenticator that can be used to bar access to anyone oh. with his personnel. Nice. Be advised that a safety feature prevents usage during timefall. Use it wisely. I can make a truck now? That's nice. Alright, I'll take this goddamn sewing kit to this weirdo cosplayer. At least it's not going through mule territory, which is nice. But it's kind of a bummer that... Don't have any. Oh, I have to retrieve sticky guns. Interesting. Don't have any other deliveries to make to the cosplayer. You can use those little darlings to stun your enemies and give yourself some breathing room. Just equip and toss. They'll trigger on contact. They deliver a shock that should incapacitate every living thing within the blast radius. Living only, though. They won't do you any good against BTs. Wait, is is Conan the cosplayer? I didn't think so. I could be wrong. It's already sorted. Okay. Oh, he's dating the cosplayer. Really? Okay. All right. I thought that was... I thought the cosplayer was the weird couple, but not. This is not a very hospitable... Not, not very hospitable ground to cover with the bike. I'm going to guess there's a lot of time fall here. Yeah. Nice bike. Thank you. Someone else made it. But. There we go. Nice little Hyrule Bridge. Alright, here we go. Give us a nice little shortcut. Oh! Extreme! I did not. God damn it. <laughs> I didn't do shit. Maybe I need to hit extreme earlier. Uh. Uh. Let's try it again. Fuck you! Ah. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, BB liked it. That's what's important. BB had a good time. Let's tag this. Yeah, the part where the bike catches on everything. I mean, this this terrain specifically is made to not be passable with the bike. So, I'm probably going to abandon this very quickly. I mean, I knew what I was getting into. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm already fucked. Fuck it. Whatever. Thanks for the free bike. There are paths, though. Yeah. Come on.
Give it a little spin on the back tire here. There we go. You can turn in place if you lean up on the rear tire, which is weird, but it works, sort of. What's the reason that these AI aren't able to fabricate things such as vehicles for couriers? They are. You, you can fabricate vehicles uh, at most of the major cities. You just have to have the resources to do it. Foxy me up. Thank you for the sub. Welcome. Oh yeah, they do need to be hooked into the network to function and have access to the ability to do that. Yeah. Seems like a relaxing game. It is. It is. It can be stressful too. It's it's sort of as relaxing or as stressful as you want to make it sometimes. If you just do one delivery at a time and kind of pick a non-confrontational path to get to where you're going. I can get over these rocks. Yep, time falls kicking in though. Ha! Oh dear. Brr. Uh, Seriously? Yeah, I confronted the ground pretty intensely, didn't I? I chose the confrontational path. You get to decide to take the longer, chiller routes most of the time. Or take a bunch of missions into Mule and Rainy territory if you want a bit more action. Yeah, the game also does a really good job of making you bet against yourself. And if, like, once you kind of understand how to read the interface, which can take a while, then you can be like, oh, I can pick up, like, three extra deliveries that are on the way. Uh, even out in the wild, you'll see packages that are dropped by other couriers or by mules that you can pick up for extra likes, which help you level, kind of progress. Unlock more stuff at your relative destinations. Okay, well, I'm going straight towards BTs, so of course I am. Stop it. Why does it keep going out of the map? Why is it doing that? It's weird. Well, whatever. Sometimes it gets bugged like that. Yeah, no big deal. I was just kind of checking what the uh, what the time fall situation was. Check my weather report. Night Bort. Thank you for the prime and the 13 months of sub. Oh wow, I got to just come right here. Time fall? F no. I got things to do. Can you make it official? Whenever I mention your name to my partner, he gets all excited and starts talking about how much he wants to meet you. He's pretty interested in the chiral network too. Totally on board with it and everything. But... I'm still having trouble wrapping my head around it. I guess what I'm saying is that I'm 
okay with trying it out, just without any of the extra strings, if that's an option. If it is, then would you mind doing the honors? Let me look up, um, they sent me a review guide to kind of point me towards the director's cut content. Let me, let me look up how to, how to unlock the, uh, the races. I want to check that out. I think it was after, it was after delivery 35, which I just did. Let's see here. One second. Your training grounds. Oh, it's an email. Okay. By delivering materials to the racetrack terminal on the south side of the Timefall farm. Okay. You really cross half the U.S.? You cross the whole U.S. But, you know, it's a video game. There he is. Sam? Sam Bridges! There's our guy. Uh, welcome to our summer home by the falls. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, thanks for making the trip. I've always wanted to meet you. I know what you're thinking. Is that an otter on my head? Or am I just happy to see you? <laughs> well, both. Actually, the otter's a member of the weasel family. I have weasels in my family, but enough about my brother. <laughs> Man, you are tough. Hey, did you know that otters can survive without land? Oh yeah, they eat, sleep, even give birth all in the water. The only thing they can't do in the water is drown. <laughs> Such good swim swimmers, say. Okay. Wow, you laugh about as much as this guy. Hey, by the way, you should have this. It'll help you on your way. Yeah, don't worry about me. I've got an otter one. <laughs> Come on. Come on, otter one? That's pretty good. Come on. Oh, man, you're the only audience I've had in like 12 years. And doesn't, doesn't this let you float like an otter if you wear it? You like float on your tummy, or you float on your back, right? By the way, that hood was threaded by the hand of my cosplay partner. And she's amazing. It's triple stitched. That's got silk. She's incredible. Wear it and you too can ride the river rapids without fear. <laughs> Unless you're afraid of looking too sexy. <laughs> oh, right? Really? Still nothing? You know what? Fine. Just go. Just go, okay? Yeah, and make the river your friend. That'll be fun. Good work. Yeah. New order available. A lot of gl glomps you XD uh, energy. <laughs> Chiral Artist Studio distribution. Well, I'm going to go back there. I'm trying to remember the Timefall Farm. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah. I had some USBs. Cosplay culture is great. You picked this up for me? You shouldn't have. Really. Ooh. That's a lot of lore. Gosh, there's a lot of lore in this game. God bless. Uh, I, th I thought this was the time. Yeah, okay. Okay. So there must be, there's like a place I can go down here. I guess I can ride the river, you know? Contribution. I'm not carrying any cargo, who cares? I guess I have some gear, but whatever, that can be replaced. All right, it's time. Uh, there it is. Huh? 
Does it only does it only show up if you're in the water? Oh, it's okay, it's back there. Alright. I see it now. I think the river flows upwards. No, I it, I assume it flows south, which is where I want to go. I'll leave the bike. Whatever, I'll come back. You get actual cyberpunk quick hacks. Kind of yes, actually. Uh, when you go into the when you go into your like first person view, if you target a city. You can quick hack it and make it so that it's always on top. So like if you you do that, it actually uses a little bit of battery, but then it pins that location on the overlay. Um, and if you don't, then it'll it'll fade away eventually. So it's actually really useful, it's super super useful. All right, here we go. Keep it up. Oh man, there's even a stunt ramp into the water. God bless. Hold on, I gotta drop some likes on on this player for doing the right thing. No. All right, fine, fuck it. We're going for it. Ultra Extreme! Whoa! <laughs> BB like that. Look at that flip. That's so stupid. All right, so how do I get... Ah! Okay, here we go. Oh, okay. All right. Grab all my shit. There we go. <laughs> what is this game, man? Uh. There we go. Why does he keep doing that? It's like wiggling his arms. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Careful with the waterfall. It's fine. It's fine. Can you can you just pancake into the ground? Can you like fall too far in this game? Relaxing. Did a triple flip into, into a river. Now I'm just cruising. I kind of need to check my map though. I don't know how far south I have to go. <laughs> Oopsie, yeah, that's the perfect emote. Uh have a shake weight with you? It seems like it, doesn't it? He's like bonking the, the BB tank. It's even making little tink tink sounds. Kojima might be the definition of feature creep and I love it. Oh hey, free climbing anchor. No mind if I do. Ah, this is so goddamn pretty. I'm gonna. What? How did I do? Why did I? What? I'm doing rolls and flips. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's acting like he's trying to cl uh, crack a clam open. Oh my, I gotta get my my footing here so that I can check the map and see where I'm headed. Okay. Uh, oh boy. I'm done. No, you're not, Sam. Hmm. Okay, almost there. There's ladders on this thing. That's interesting. Oh, 
Okay. There's got to be lore on that thing. There's got to be. Oh, I already see it. There's already a USB stick. Actually, hold on. I need to take a swig. Take a swig from Bridges Energy. It's the gamer's choice. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now here's... How do you start floating? Is there a button you can hit? Because I don't want to fall. That makes all my shit fall off. Is there nothing but monster energy in that? No. Uh, the contract with monster energy has expired. It is now Bridges Energy. There's gotta be a way to float, right? Begin the float? Why do I have medals on my back? Huh? When, why am I carrying medals? Oh, that must just be something else that got dropped or something. Both triggers? Both triggers just make me kind of hunker up. Jumping just makes me do that. Ah, whatever. I guess I'm still... I'm right here, so whatever. This game's still plastered with ads. Oh, well, I mean, it was, it was never plastered with ads. The monster energy placement was a bit... was a bit bizarre. A double chat both triggers? Mm -hmm. Didn't seem to work. I think you do, maybe you do just have to fall. Uh, but no, the monster energy branding is gone from the game. It did seem a little weird. It's, it seemed a little weird. I'll agree with that. It seemed a little out of place. I mean, it seemed very out of place. bike for me. Yeah, what's this green? The green strands coming down? Check that out. There we go. Oh yeah, not bad. Yeah, that's a good point. There was Calorie Mate in Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid 4 even had, like, iPods. I've read some people suggesting that Kojima's inclusion of branded products is a Andy Warhol-esque infusion of pop culture with pop art or something. I think that's being pretty, pretty generous with Kojima. I think even the author that I, I wrote that suggested that also said that's being very generous, but... But yeah, I mean, in Metal Gear Solid 4, Old Man Snake could pop out his Apple TM iPod TM and listen to it in the, uh, in the dystopian war-torn future, so... Yeah, maybe it's just product placement. Could be. Anybody hear me? Oh! It's like the first time I've ever gotten a response. Slide on down here. Surprised that worked. <laughs> Do you recommend this game? Eat my bullets? Well, first, before I say yes, uh, I am slash was sponsored to play this game. Technically, last night was my sponsorship, but I'm still playing because I really like the game. So, yeah. Yes, uh, but. There's a pretty big but on the end of that. I like it a lot, but it's not It's not really an action game. Uh, it's, it's weird. It's a weird game, and I think it's for particular people with particular tastes. If you like games that are, like, a little more passive and melancholy, if you like games that are more about planning and 
observation than about action and and violence. Like this game is maybe a little more Animal Crossing than it is Metal Gear Solid. Sort of. It is actually pretty Metal Gear Solid in terms of like walking around. Gas station sim, Euro truck sim, yeah. It is it is about the journey, for sure. Uh if you if you enjoy going on hikes. Yell out again. What the heck? What was that all about? Anybody hear me? What other games are like this in terms of planning and melancholy? That's an interesting question. Um Oh, there we go. Okay. Elden Ring? I mean, Elden Ring's got some action, though. It's You gotta flip around, you gotta hit buttons at the right times. It's not... There's no time fall. Why are there BTs? Fish, thank you for the reset. Um, other games... That's, that's actually kind of tough. Death Stranding is kind of in a realm of its own. In terms of being like a AAA game with sort of resource management and traversal mechanisms. Breath of the Wild and, uh, and yes, yeah, there's some Elden Ring flavor in there. But I would say, like, Breath of the Wild might be the closest if you enjoyed the act of just crossing Hyrule in Breath of the Wild. The the loop where you, like, you you spawn at a tower, you use your, uh, use your Sheikah Slate to look around, you pin where you want to go, and then you just set out. Um, also the Breath of the Wild aspect of, like, running into a Lionel where you didn't expect one and having to, like, turn around and make potions and get some good weapons and, and like, get your kit ready and then go in and fight. Those are kind of the aspects that are present in Death Stranding. Where you'll you'll take a delivery order uh, and then you'll kind of scout the route on your map. You'll buy the ladders and, and ropes and, and bridges and stuff you need. And then, uh, and then set out. And if you if you prep well, then your journey is really simple. It's really easy. You can skip over the hard parts. You can circumvent around the problem encounters. So let's see. I'm gonna assume it's down here. Wait. And there's a truck down there. Racetrack terminal. That's what we need. So, I think because of that, though, uh, since it doesn't offer the experience that most games do, it's it's not really like an empowerment fantasy. It's not meant to make you feel super powered. It's not meant to give you the experience of leveling up and, and being able to double jump. Even though that is kind of a thing in this game, you, you do get the ability to do that. It just kind of takes a different form. Ah, really interesting stuff. All right, I need a lot of, a lot of materials, ceramics, metals. And uh, Chiralium. I have two of those, but I think I can probably get the rest from the farm. at how many I need. That's how many I have. That should be fine. that many packages is a power fantasy it can be I, think I had to crouch to get through the door 
Oh, almost. He's doing it kind of automatically. Too close. Hey, was it Ferret King? See you? Your bike going slow. What's going on? What is going on? There we go. I kept cutting the turbo for some reason. I need a lot more. Damn. Wait, I, think I got a thousand legs. Why won't it let me put in the... Oh, is it the wrong material? Oops. Button. The game has amazing sound design. It really does. It really, really does. Oh, okay. I must not be holding the right thing. I need metals and ceramics. What am I holding? resins. All right. That that explains it. That explains it. All right. I need I need 800 metals and 1400 ceramics. Okay, like 1420 ceramics. <laughs> So if I do a thousand and fifteen hundred, I should cover it. Oh man. I cannot find a way to sit in this chair that doesn't like make my back tighten up. Beginning scan. Scanning bridges ID. Verifying ID. Weapons detected. I'm gonna try to, try to I can like kick, kick it into more recline mode. Maybe that's what I gotta do. just barely enough. There we go. Damn it, I have to carry it by hand. Time for booze and chilling? Hell yeah. Absolute male fantasy of, yeah, carrying all the groceries in one go. Hell yeah. One of the first games I played on my PS4 Pro and my 4K TV when it came out in 2019. Visually stunning game. 
the first, yeah, the first one I did when I got a PS4 Pro was Final Fantasy 15, which was also a pretty good ride. That's how I broke in my 4K TV. See this racetrack. stairs. There we go. Is air transportation not viable anymore? Hmm. I'm sure there's some bit of lore that explains that, but yeah, I'm not sure about that. I guess Timefall probably knocks planes out of the sky. You could probably fly above it, though. I'm 20 short. Oh. A 20 metal. God damn it. Ugh. All right. Hey, what is this game if not running back and forth, huh? I gotta get up and take more stretch breaks. That's probably it. It's just too easy to zone out. In game. Well, that's not good. That's not good for anybody. Weapons detected. All weapons will be locked until departure. All clear. Welcome, Sam Porter Bridges. I want to see this racetrack though. I gotta. Notice much difference between the director's cut and the base game so far. It's it's not a it's not a complete revolution in the game, no. It it looks a little bit prettier. The draw distances are a little further out, which is nice. Um it basically has like Metal Gear Solid VR missions in it, which is nice. Uh, I'm about to I'm about to see the races, which is another thing they added, so. Have you seen any of the Metal Gear looking stealth content they teased in the trailer, or was that just Kojima joshing us? No, 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 there's there's very directly, like, basically a VR missions mode where you can play, uh, like, pre-constructed stealth missions. Okay. Yeah. That's very much in there. And it's exactly what the trailer made it look like. I always try to jump up that side. Okay. Hey, James Fisto. 
Thank you for the love. Oh, fish. Yeah, thank you for the sub. I think I missed that a while ago. Strand wolf? Okay. Running races. Open your cufflinks and select tips to view race rules, driving advice, and more. I'll access the terminal to do trials. Here we go. Oh, the director's cut upgrade on Steam isn't DLC. It's a separate 70 gigabyte game. Yeah, it is. Which is kind of a bummer because you have to down... Like, if you want to transfer your save, you have to download the original Death Stranding and then upload your save from that and then download Death Stranding Director's Cut and pick a menu option to pull your save over. It works and it's really it's really smooth, but you do have to have... You do have to do it, do it that way. Let's see here. Three laps. Stripes competing for best overall time. Vehicle batteries are continually recharged apart from when boosting. Boosting drains the battery. So be sure to keep an eye on how much charge you have remaining. Okay. Oh, you get to choose. Oh. Car go fast. Perfect. Of course, it's like retro wave. Of course it is. God damn it. Kojima. learned how you're supposed to I guess you can't turn that tightly while you're boosting yeah that must be it Yeah, Kevin, I'll agree with that. The driving physics in this game are a little a little funky. Turning is not a thing in this game. Hey, you can still compete. I thought that was an interesting choice myself too, but Look at this though. It's all about racing line. It's about drive. It's about passion. Oh, look at that. If you do your line properly, you don't have to let off the booster. <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit janky, it is. Show off for the audience a little bit there. Ugh. See the power of a superior racing line? 
I fucked it. Ooh, no! Almost made it. Whatever. I passed my ghost, though. Oh, you can drift? Oh, well, that makes way more sense then. Control and keyboard, ah. Oh, okay, this gets you time rank up. That's really nice. Because it's actually really hard to find missions to rank up your your delivery time your delivery time ranking. What is this? This is like a different vehicle. Check this out. Oh, Roadster? Okay. Sure. Let's see if I can find what the drift button is. I don't know if the... Surely the Roadster can drift, right? How does this handle better than the bike? It like comes off tires? Now we're racing. Oh, okay, you can jump, damn it. Mm. Okay, B is drift, all right. Why can you jump? <gasps> Love it. happy. Ah. Seems like drifting doesn't really cost you any speed either. Yeah. If you just give it a little tap, you actually get to turn way, way sharper. It doesn't seem like it really lose off that much speed.
Ah, uh, good stuff. A transmission just came in from the track with data on a roadster vehicle. Looks like it's a racing model built primarily for speed. I can use this in the if you want to take in the game itself now. It might be just the thing. If you're planning to go off road, however, you should probably stick with one of the other options. Anyhow, should the idea appeal, fabricate away. Cool. Oh, the racetrack I built was used by somebody else. Enjoy that racetrack, everybody. Can you not? Oh, maybe you have to get in there from the terminal. Oh, that's probably how it is, yeah. Or maybe. Well, I guess that's just where the cars come from. Ranked race? Roadster long course. Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna do a ranked race. Let's let's put up a good time here. That's the one. That's got the driving beat I need. Oh yeah, that that plot beat about Sam's mom is, is kind of early in the game. Candlejack, thanks for the cheer. Oh no! <laughs> I've already ruined it. Alright, here we go. This is the one. I haven't done this variation of the track yet, so... I haven't had the chance to scout it. Whoa! Okay. All right. Healing that turn actually would probably require a little bit of nuance. Ooh, flawless pumpkin. Thanks for the prime. find the stamina to stream for so long? Is that the gamer energy inside? I've only been streaming for about four hours right now, but I don't know. Uh, my streams are... I don't, I don't like really amp up my energy levels for my stream, so I'm pretty relaxed. Uh, I think if I, if I were trying to put on more of a show, then my streams would probably not be so, so long. But really, just Sitting, playing games, and talking with people is not really a draining activity for me. It said, I am going to stop streaming here in a second. After I, after I put in a time, uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Mostly because I, I have to eat, and then uh, I have some things going on this evening. Bruce and I are going to record a podcast. And then I also have dinner plans. If only I didn't have these silly societal obligations that require me to go outside.
than I could spend my entire life streaming video games on the internet. have dinner in the podcast at the same time yeah nothing nothing makes a podcast better than the sounds of chewing into a microphone that's one thing everyone loves the sound of open mouth noshing directly into a sensitive microphone it'll be the all chewing all chewing cast the chew cast Ugh, boy i whiffed that hard Okay, I think I get it. When your tires are squealing, you do kind of... You do lose some energy. Or you do lose some speed. And then beyond that, it does seem like it's just purely line. What, fireworks? Final rank will be determined. You receive rewards based on that ranking. Okay. Cool. My provisional ranking is in the top 10%? For real? Well, what are the ranking rewards? Oh. <laughs> Banners and materials. Okay. Well, it had to be something like that, right? Just a big heavy suitcase filled with ceramics. Awesome. Director's cut. This was Kojima's true vision. He made Death Stranding, but he was really like, this is a racing game. And it needs a racetrack. I like how somebody put this here so you can watch the racetrack. When your tires squeal, loosen up on the wheels, my father always said. Yeah? I guess that makes sense. You're turning too tight, going too fast. Cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. That's the uh that's the stream concluding sneeze. Ah, thank you. Thank you for the blessings. Uh but yeah, I guess I guess hashtag sponsored. Um if the if the hot racing action has titillated you, or the like Metal Gear Solid style missions, or just death stranding in general. Use the DS command and get a little tracking link in chat. Uh, 505 Games would, would appreciate that. And it'll make me look better if you click on it. Tap that little link. You don't have to. That's fine. Just hanging out and watching me play video games. That's more than enough. It's more than I would expect. So thank you all very much for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. I uh, I don't know if I'm going to have time to stream tomorrow. I might, I might be able to reschedule something. Actually, I probably will reschedule something so I can stream in the morning, but got some other things going on. Meeting up with a, a high dollar patron in the evening. And then uh, have some other... Oh yeah, I'm gonna go see Morbius. That's right. I'm gonna go get real drunk and watch Morbius. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. It's been a while since I've watched a bad movie uh, while blitzed out of my mind. So we'll see. I don't know how drink I need, or how drink I, how drunk I need to be to watch Morbius. The last time I did it, I think, was, uh, was, uh, Jupiter Ascending, actually. I took, like, four shots and then walked into the theater and had the best time of my life. So I think I'm gonna do something similar with Morbius. It feels like that kind of game. Or it feels like that kind of movie. Yeah, the 10 out of 10. Hit film Morbius. So I'll let you guys know, <laughs> I'll let you guys know on Monday, I guess, if I'm not too hungover, how that experience went. Uh, but again, thank you all very much for watching. I, if there's one thing I love more than video games, it's sharing video games with people and hearing other people's perspectives and experiences and, and takes on things. It's it's delightful. And it mellows me out too. Makes it so I'm not just so, so in my own head all the time. 
But yeah, thanks again. And uh, I guess I'll, yeah, I'll be streaming kind of in the morning, to, well, morning Pacific tomorrow. I'm not sure what. Oh yeah, it's Cyber Sunday. Maybe I'll finally get back to playing Ripper. I'll try to play Ripper tomorrow. I will try. At least I'm getting my And uh, I'll see you guys then, maybe. And have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody.